can't Inter just lose at one point? Hello, my soccer universe. I'm still a little bit under electricity after that Inter Fiorentina game. I died a thousand deaths in there. At least I was rewarded at the end. Um, it actually started not well. For due to technical problems, I missed the first Fiorentina goal in the first minute, which is an own goal by De Frey. Um, kind of, yeah. I don't want to say it pissed me off, but I, I was not quite happy about it. Um, then, five minutes later, um, Inter gets the equalizer through Vecino, which I thought was for sure an offside. No VAR, not for the only time in this game, uh, is consulted. And yeah, but that much, it's one of those. But okay, 1-1. One, one. That point I thought it's the right there uh, decision and Fiorentina went forward, had chances and didn't take any. And it was then Inter who actually had around the, towards the end of the half a little bit more of a game. And I'm sitting here with my Milan shirt because I'm cold. I want to wear a long sleeve and I felt yeah, that's the one that I want to wear. But uh, yeah. Whenever I wear this Milan shirt uh, um, <clears throat> in, uh, at an Inter game, it doesn't seem to work. And uh, yes, I am superstitious. I don't wear shirts when I'm watching a game on TV or when I know that the team is playing and I'm not in the stadium. I don't wear those. Because they will lose. It is that ridiculous, but um, too often it happens. So yeah, call me crazy. But that's my rule. On the day that the, the team is playing, I'm not wearing a shirt unless I'm going to the stadium. Then I will, will, will wear it. And yeah, seemingly there's another rule. If I want Inter to lose, don't wear a Milan shirt. I guess. I badly wanted them to lose. I really thought Fiorentina uh, can do serious damage. Serious damage they did, but you know, the other damage was done too. And yeah, in this kind of second phase where uh, Inter was coming, and I gotta give it to Politano, he made a beautiful goal from the edge of the box, really nicely shot. Um, yeah, kudos to him, and I'm trying to calm down <laughs> a little bit and take it a little bit more serious. I don't think it was a deserved lead. Uh, I think a draw would have been uh, a better result, but yeah. 2-1 at halftime for Inter. Then there is a free kick early in the second half and yeah, seemed to be cleared, but then it's pretty clear that uh, I think it was Gerson who actually had a pretty big counter chance in the first half where he has it all, he just needs to put the ball to Simeone on, on his right. Now he tries to take the shot himself and yeah, he's not a goal scorer. Uh, those things already uh, messed big time with me. Yeah, and then he handles the ball in the box. It was pretty clear this is going to be a penalty. Perisic converts it 3-1 and at that moment. I actually thought about um, turning off the game. Simply for the reason that Inter is a cold-blooded team. They are like one of those that it's really hard to knock out. Um, now they got something going again and it's really, really, really hard to knock them out. Um, unfortunately and you gotta really put in the work and don't make stupid mistakes like pulling the penalty but yeah Fiorentina came back um, I think it was Biragi who seemingly scored the 2-3 ball was in the box Muriel kind of cannot handle it it falls to uh, Biragi he shoots it home everyone celebrating and then VAR comes again for the third term, and for the third term, it goes to uh, against Fiorentina because there was seemingly a foul for Muriel. Yes, he hits the shin of whoever it was. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if I would have really. I, yeah, I don't know. It, lo it, it looked worse uh, on, I guess, on the replay than uh, it looked during the game. So that the goal is taken away. Uh, fortunately, just about five, six minutes later, um, Muriel gets a free kick and makes the goal of the weekend. I gotta say, this was a really pretty uh, free kick taken and no goalkeeper can save that one. That was right up there with Messi. Although Messi does those on the standard and Muriel I have not seen so far. Muriel came on, I think, for uh, Simeone later on. And Fiorentina tried and tried and tried, but Inter being, as I said, this cold-blooded, very measured team, 
um, seemingly gets the game ices the game and uh, to no small part to Lautaro Martinez who made a big stunt uh, in the box where he thought he went down and he's lying there blah 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 ah, you can see I'm really PO about it and yeah <laughs> so was Chiesa who just slammed it against the wall when seemingly uh, needed to, to be take, taken care of uh, absolutely I hated it because at, afterwards he was running fine again but it was Chiesa and then a seven minute seven minute uh, edit on time uh, through all the bar reviews I understand it um, Chiesa in the 96th on the box uh, tries to put it in and hits the hand of and I forget his name I think D'Ambrosio up arm and then I think it rolls off the arm something like that I mean I could even see that Inter is not happy with that one because this was kind of a uh, <laughs> hand pal. I mean the referee gave it immediately then they needed to take for two more minutes to look at it I mean I, I actually didn't like that the referee he wasted a lot of time on VAR and I think either I really think they should have a VAR re referee where the booth can overrule it and it really only if it's not a clear decision they say uh, ref please have, 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 have a look but it cannot be that you waste that much it was almost too much um, wasting on it and I just hate it when there is a goal scored and I mean, I think VAR in Italy is working well, but today it, it just, yeah, peeled me, pee me off. I gotta say it that way. So yeah, um, they look at it and the penalty stands, where to convert it and yeah, draw. That was the minimum I wanted to get. I wanted Mina to edge closer to uh, Inter and same thing for Roma. And Roma is still playing Inter. Milan is still playing Inter. There's a chance. There's a chance I have Inter right where about them. That if either of my favorite teams wins against Inter, they got them. Uh, and that's where that's what I want to have. Well, and then I get another free kick, but fortunately this is saved. Uh, you could see Chiesa. <laughs> and I really, I love Chiesa. Uh, I love Fiorentina a lot. Um, the way they're playing, it's so much fun to watch them play really great a really great team fun team to watch yes there's a lot of inexperience there and they make stupid mistakes i don't think the goalkeeper is all that uh great but they are a fun team to watch absolutely going forward everything else in Serie A, yeah santoria Cagliari, one nil haven't seen much one one between spal and sassolo uh, Juve wins in Bologna 1-0, yeah, Bologna gets, gets a little bit, Kivo uh, against Genoa 0-0 uh, and um, I started watching Parma against Na Napoli and then um, uh, we were eating and I asked uh, my daughter what's the score, 2-0 Na Napoli and I said okay I'm not gonna work. continue watching this um, and I uh, switched into the League Cup final which in the end turned out to be a good choice but more on that a little bit later. Um, so that was Serie A. Um, as I said, standings. Let's quickly look at the standings. And I'm gonna take, uh, we have now, yeah, Inter Milan, Inter 47, Milan 45, Roma 44. That's how I like it. Um, Torino is getting close to 38, level of points with uh, Lazio, Atalanta also 30, so there's a broad midfield. Fiorentina 36 at the moment, yeah, they actually lost uh, spots because of that draw, but you know, it was against a big opponent, Bologna, three behind Empoli, still, so that's gonna be interesting. Um, another match that didn't go my way, I saw that the uh, Saloniki Derby ended 1-1, but you know, still many points ahead. And yeah, let's just run through, re through the results, I can tell you tomorrow in the car a little bit more about the Premier League, or let's see games of the day. Um, I want to go Germany. We had uh, Frankfurt uh, beating Hannover 3-0 and then a great game between uh, Dortmund and Leverkusen. Well, Leverkusen actually dominated the first half but it was um, Dortmund who takes the lead out of uh, first uh, chance. Sagadu in the 30th. Uh, Folland then finally uh, puts a goal for Le uh, Leverkusen but the right minute later Sancho really nicely nicely played uh, attack by Dor Dortmund ball is at home uh, Goethe makes it even 3-1 but you know we know that leads for Dortmund are, are safe and Tar 
uh, in the 75th makes it 3-2 and Dortmund holds on. So we have still Dortmund three points ahead of Bayern and that was a huge win for them because Leverkusen was a really strong team at the moment. Um, what else can we say? Um, yeah, let's go Spain. Uh, Leganes Valencia 1-1. One, one. I saw the Atletico Madrid second goal, which was so funny because Saul uh lobs it and the defender is just standing on line and misjudges and goes over him into goal. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. So 2-0 there. Betis wins 2-0 at Real Valladolid. And Real Madrid pulls out a uh, win. Two penalties. Bonsema and Bale. Uh, Marti had the equalizer. Yeah, ah, and two red cards. I see Nacho first, a yellow red, and then Rochina, 86th and 88th. Uh, so, all stays level. Barcelona, 57, Atletico, 50, Real Madrid, 48, Getafe is now in fourth, 39, Sevilla, 37, uh, I love it, 37, Betis, 36. Uh, is it on the bottom? Villarreal, yeah. The Villarreal and the Rayo, 23, 23, Wesker, 19, and Saved is at the moment Celta with 25 and Real Valladolid with 26 and Espanol within seven points doesn't look uh, too great. So that's Spain. Uh, let's go France. I want to finish up with England. Um, Nopeiras 2 4, Nantes, Bordeaux 1 0, uh, Toulouse Car 1 1, Rennes, Marseille 1 1 doesn't help either one. I would say I saw the first goal by Rennes, which um, was headed onto Balotelli's head. And then in Monaco beating Lyon 2-0, that's a big result. Um, I want to check the standings at the moment. Uh, Lyon loses. Now Lille really looks safe in the second uh, spot. Lyon will probably go into Champions League qualification if they're not caught by Saint-Étienne. Marseille loses a uh, spot from Saint-Étienne, so it's now in fifth place, which would be outside of European competition. Reus is also in 41 points, so yeah. Rennes moves up in ninth. Uh, it's quite tight in France as well. I mean, between the, uh, the 11th, Nîmes with 36 points, and Lyon with 46. It's only 10 points within third place. And yeah, I mean, there is Reims is really high up for 441. Then there's a three point drop with Montpellier. But I think the, uh, all of these have a slim chance. So let's go England. Didn't see the highlights. Arsenal beat Southampton 2 0. Which doesn't bode well for Southampton, I gotta say. Yeah, 24 points. They're in the relegation zone. Ralf has a tough task ahead ahead of him. Cardiff might be falling. We don't know about Brighton yet. They still have a game in hand. Newcastle, I hope, is kind of safe. But I think all eyes were on Manchester, where United played against Liverpool. And I really, this was the game I wanted to watch today and had everything um, set up for that. It wasn't worth watching. There were remarkable things in there, but I think the most remarkable is how well organized Manchester United was in the defense. Um, they had lots of injuries and this continued throughout the game. They had to make three substitutions, all three in the first half due to injury. Uh, and what's even worse, Lingard, who came on, injured himself with pro when he probably had the biggest chance of the game, where uh, Alisson made a really great save on him. And then he had to come off and Alexis Sanchez had to come on for him. I mean, absolutely a disaster. Um, yes, it's a big game, but, you know, uh, yes, he had in injuries, but to me it seemed a little bit too risky to uh, have those players on. And also Liverpool had, and that I think it was crucial, had to make a substitution because uh, of the three attackers, um, Firmino seemed to be the one that has the most going for him, for them. And he came off because he um, bent his ankle a little bit too awkwardly. And you thought, yeah, with all these substitutions, Liverpool actually should get it, should get something going. And they tried, but they were complete with no ideas. Every cross in the box, United got. I mean, they were standing deep, two lines, um, and Liverpool can't do anything about it. And it was even Manchester United who was threatening more. Uh, to get the goal and a nil nil was kind of the logical re 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 result. I uh, last week I asked what's wrong with Dortmund. Uh, um, similarly, what's wrong with Liverpool? Um, maybe the draw. I mean, ahead of the game, I, I, I would have said a draw for Liverpool is not a bad result. Uh, to be honest with you, um, and it keeps them now in clear first place. But. Um, 
I don't like how they're playing. It's the, there's something missing. There's something missing, and I think Manchester United give them a give everyone a blueprint of how to stop Liverpool. Um, that's what worries me. But yeah, the game was ultimately utterly forgettable, and I so much want to wear one of my Liverpool shirts, but since I have them, I barely wear them. I I, I like it. I hope Liverpool gets out of all out of the funk and quick, quick. And then there was the small man of the League Cup final that I just said I switched over and I think I started watching from the 65th minute and from what I heard from before, um, Chelsea parked the bus, uh, City had all the opportunities, seemingly I have not seen any highlights of the first half and so on, but from when I started watching Chelsea was well in the game and Azar was um, outstanding. And they should have scored, especially when Pedro had the ball on the right. I mean, this is the goal that has scored the goal uh, against Manchester United in the Champions League final. Don't pass it. Take it yourself. You had a clear chance to make something there. I actually thought that at towards the end of the second half, um, Chelsea really had the better of the game. Uh, over time, utterly forgettable, except for one situation where Sterling crosses in and gets the ball to Aguero and Kepa makes a save. And then, of course, the big Kepa saga, um, twice looking injured. They're bringing, they're about to bring on Willy Cup Caballero and I'm thinking, oh no, oh no, oh no, not this, not this dude. I mean, after this World World Cup, he should not play anymore. I'm sorry to say this, it, it, it's just horrible. But they want to bring him on, and then Kepa doesn't want to be substituted. I mean, I've never seen anything that he did. No, 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 I want to stay here. No, 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 no. And they don't know. I mean, they already told the referee we were going to make a substitution. And I've never seen anything like it. That No, we don't. No, it's waved off. Then they even call Zola and Sari and ask him, what do you, what do you want to do now? Well... Kepa stayed on, and yeah, he almost saved two penalties, only saved one. Aguero slid through, um, and Chelsea loses the penalty shootout, and yeah, it's down to Jorginho. I mean, you don't shoot a penalty by uh, making ballet steps up in, in the run-up. That was horrible. Uh, I mean, that was the easy, easy, easy save in, in, in the world. It reminded me of the 2016 Italy-Germany shoe, should have it Italy did similar. Uh, stupid stuff. Uh, and then when Kepa finally saved, and it's 2-2 two -two after three shooters, I see David Luiz, or as I call him, Tingy Tangy Bob, running up, and whenever a player extends the run-up outside of the box, you can almost be certain they're a, nervous and they're not going to make it. He almost would have made it, but he hits the post. By the way, uh, the perspective from just at the shooter, you know, from this uh, overhead camera is scary. I mean, there you really see how small the goal suddenly gets. Uh, that I liked, but I didn't like what was ha 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 happening there. I mean, Manchester City uh, wins the penalty shootout. But I gotta give credit to Chelsea. I mean, they hung in there. They were just beaten by... Um, City uh, badly, and now they hung in there for a nil-nil. Um, they, I, from what I saw at, at that time, I thought Chelsea was the better team, especially in the second half. I know I didn't see sixty-five minutes of the game where probably City was the better team, but yeah, it was not exactly my Sunday, but it was my weekend. Milan keeps winning, Lask keeps winning. I gotta show you one more last shirt, I, I guess. I'm gonna go to bed now. Maybe there are some saner thoughts come um, to me uh, during night, and I might do a small video tomorrow when driving to work. But yeah. Hello, once again, just a little add on to the video yesterday. Uh, looking all over it, yes, Mark got all the decisions right in the Fiorentina Inter game. I am a little bit calmed down. I think this was a well-deserved point for Fiorentina. It was a great game overall. Yes, I'm still a little bit sour about the antics that Inter is putting here and there, but on the other side, yeah. Everything that VAR did, although it seemed a little bit uh, odd at times, I, I still think that the first goal of Fiorentina 
I personally didn't see that this was necessary a foul. Yes, he hits the shin, but uh, we're splitting hairs. I mean, there are so many contacts that are not uh, given, so um, I find it a little bit nitpicky. Uh, and something very similar happened that I saw the highlights this morning about Levante Real Madrid, where Levante actually really had the better of the game. First penalty for Real Madrid, yes, that's okay. It had the hand like that, and yes, we don't have the protection, the hand for protection anymore. It's not in the rules anymore, so okay. That was okay. Uh, Levante gets the equalizer, rather deserved at that point, and then a similar scene uh, as between the uh, as Interfior Fiorentina. Even more ridiculous, where uh, as a clearance by, uh, by uh, attempted clearance, I mean, it looked clumsy by the Levante player, and he just touches Casemiro, who falls and is dying, and he gets a penalty for that. They even look at it at VAR, and they are giving it. Um, and that's the second penalty for Real Madrid. I, I would say, highly contested penalty. Um, same. Almost same time. I think the Real Madrid was a little bit later, but uh, that well, Inter. I don't think it was a foul, and this was also not a foul, in my personal view. Um, so for that reason, yeah. But then I can see. I mean, uh, Inter's appeal against the penalty that uh, got the draw for Fiorentina. I actually think they hold a little bit of water. They hold some water, actually. Um, if the roles were reversed, I would feel horrible about it. And the last thing I want to add, I also saw the Juve highlights. I had another win for Juve. Ground out, non deserved. Bologna looks like a team that saved. And then lastly, I saw that there was also a goal, a uh, League Cup final last. And then um, uh, Aguero scored a goal that. Yeah, VAR again decided whether it was offside or not. I think this was a, such a close decision. What happened to, if in doubt, for the attacker? Just saying. But yeah, I really didn't seem to have missed much. Uh, the game was largely forgettable, except for what Kepa pulled. Um, Having studied up a little bit also Caballero, he seemingly was a penalty killer, which whatever he did at, the, at that World Cup, uh, for me, ruined his reputation. I mean, that goal that he gave up against uh, Croatia, I'm sorry, this was just... And he, you already could see in the Iceland game that he had no control over the, over the box, I would say. Anyway. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. The player doesn't want to come off, and you could even see Sarri storming off the field almost. I mean, WTF. I'm curious to watch the fallout, and yeah, we're going to talk about that here. So, back to the original video. <laughs> Bye. Let me know what you thought about today's games. I do you agree with my results. I may watch him some more highlights. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'm a little bit calmer now. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.